right so we have done with the preparations of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide now let us come back and do the chemical properties of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide so let us start <coughs> chemical properties yes so in chemical properties let us list out the important chemical properties of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide so before going to the concept of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide chemical properties just remember carbon monoxide is a reducing agent the property of it is reducing agent so carbon monoxide acts as a reducing agent and carbon dioxide acts as an oxidizing agent hope you would have seen my previous video i said reducing agent remember this word rol reducing agent <coughs> loses electrons and itself gets oxidized yes fine so with this particular basic data i'm what i'm going to do i'm going to take this carbon monoxide and i'm going to add to a metal oxide so in the reactivity series we have seen right there we have arranged metals <coughs> there uh, now from first you have uh, arranged metals high reactivity metal uh, series middle reactivity and least reactivity correct so i picked up two metal oxides from that one metal oxide which i picked up is iron oxide fe2o3 iron oxide so it is called iron oxide i am going to write one more oxide called zinc oxide right fine you can just just do it with anything not a problem now here what happened now this is zinc oxide now zinc iron oxide when i am adding it to carbon monoxide again here i am going to add to more carbon monoxide. so what did i say its role is to act as a reducing agent so this is ra this is ra now what is the role of reducing agent it has to lose electrons as well as get oxidized oxygen should get added so this carbon monoxide is going to pick up this oxygen from iron so this is going to break here so what do you get fe how many moles are there here two now what happened how many did carbon monoxide pick up three so this oxygen is going to add to this co2 is going to get converted to co2 how many did it pick up three now see whether it is balanced iron is two iron is two oxygen is three <clears throat> oh, yeah oxygen is 3 now here i have to write isn't it i have not balanced it because here i have written carbon so 3 now let us write so 3 plus 3 6 3 to the 6 oxygen balanced done now let us come back and see here when it is added to zinc oxide as i said it is a reducing agent it has to pick up the oxygen this is going to pick up this oxygen and this becomes zinc this is how it reacts as a reducing agent now let us come back and see carbon monoxide now carbon monoxide so carbon dioxide acid it is an oxidizing agent right what should happen now oxidizing agent means it is <coughs> oxidizing agent if i am writing in that term oxidizing agent o so this is reducing agent r so here i should write instead of l i have to write gain of electrons instead of oxidize it is o so this is what i have to remember oxidizing agent gain of electrons gets reduced reducing agent loss of electrons gets oxidized correct now here i am going to pick up magnesium uh, metal oxide i said so here i am going to just pick up a, uh, a metal so to this metal i am going to add carbon dioxide half mole only just half mole so what do i mean by half mole that means if i take cancel half two and two denominator numerator that gets cancelled you will be left with added or you will just add one oxygen atom this one oxygen will go and add to this what do you get mgo correct now <coughs> what else is left now half carbon now let us balance and see this half or uh, two and two got cancelled one correct magnesium is one half carbon done yes i got this so now observe carefully it is acting what did i say it is oxidizing agent oxidizing agent gets reduced yes loss of oxygen simple yeah now let us do now i have done this have done this let us do the second reaction with the same thing now a little bit different and i'm going to pick up the same zinc oxide here now observe carefully i'm going to add here carbon dioxide now zinc oxide and carbon dioxide remember you have that, that forms a completely adduct product means addition product completely it's going to add and forms zinc carbonate don't go and dissociate like this it's just complete 
basically if i go from this side zinc carbonate it is a decomposition thermal decomposition reaction just observe carefully when i go from this direction zinc carbonate breaks up into zinc oxide plus carbon dioxide thermal decomposition on heating it will break up into zinc oxide and carbon dioxide now in the other way it's going to add together forming zinc carbonate So now let us uh, do the next chemical property of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. <laughs> so oh, when I speak about the chemical properties, right? So I already said carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide act as a reducing agent as well as oxidizing agent. Now let us uh, do one more term uh, related to carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. That is, <clears throat> just see, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Carbon monoxide, when I look into the properties of carbon monoxide, it is a colorless, this is also a colorless gas, right? This is an odorless gas, this is also odorless gas, <clears throat> this is highly toxic, this is non-toxic, hope you understand what is toxicity, poisonous and non-poisonous, correct? Now. Next important thing, carbon monoxide is a neutral oxide. Okay, I am introducing this word now, neutral oxide. So what is a neutral oxide? Neutral oxide means that which will not show either its acidic behavior or acidic property or the basic property when it is dissolved in water. Okay, yes, so it will neither show its acidic nature or basic nature, I said, right. If it is not showing anything, acidic or basic nature, that means it is very slightly, very less if I say, very slightly soluble in water. If I, uh, uh, so water I am not going to show because I said slightly soluble in water, so no reaction with water, no reaction with water. So remember this. Now, when I speak about carbon dioxide, it is an acidic oxide. So, why did I say acidic oxide? That means, when it is dissolved in water, it is going to release the H plus ions. That is the reason it is called acidic oxide. Yes. So, let us see the reaction with water. So, when I see the reaction with water of carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, I am dissolving it in water, which is an possible reaction. So what happens, these two will come on H2CO3, carbonic acid is formed, carbonic acid is formed. Now I have to show it is an acidic oxide, that means it has to release H+. Now this carbonic acid will further break up into, observe carefully, this is going to break up two hydrogens like this, H and H. One will form H+, the other will form HCO3-. So what is this called? This is called bicarbonate ion. This is a proton. This is a bicarbonate ion. Right. Done. Now further what happens, this bicarbonate ion, HCO3- minus, is going to further break up. Yes. Now again there is a cleavage of the bond here. And this becomes H++ plus plus CO3- minus. Yes. Now observe carefully what is the charge of this particular carbonate. Now how many ions, how many protons is it giving? Two. How many protons are there? Two. That is why this is called a diprotic salt. Diprotic means two protons. So we call this as diprotic in nature or diprotic solvent. That means it has two protons in its Right. Suppose if I write H3PO4, how many protics is it? 3. So the number of H plus ions based on that I call it as diprotic. Now, why did I call it as acidic oxide? You have seen, hope you have seen when I dissolve it in water, it is releasing two hydrogen H plus ions, protons. So the release of protons, right, something which releases H plus is called or acidic in nature, something which releases OH minus is basic in nature. So because carbon dioxide is releasing or forming 
carbonic acid which is further releasing two protons in water that is why it is called an acidic oxide because this is not dissolving in water it is called a neutral oxide so note this please